Now today we're going over the steps regarding P0400, or trouble code P400. That's a trouble code for the EGR function. So if you take a look here, this is where the EGR valve lives on this vehicle. This is a 97 Maxima. Right here is an air box, but there's no way you could see this valve clearly unless I removed it. Most vehicles, you can find them on top of the engine. Um, but that being said, you have to locate your EGR valve. And you want to test a couple things. Chances are if you're getting this trouble code, you have a brake or a clog vacuum line. That's this guy right here. Or the valve itself is not working. We'll test both as well as some other things that it may be. Okay, so the first step is we have to check for vacuum. So I'm going to reinstall the airbox. I'm going, going to start the car. And I'm going to pull this off as the car's running. And at idle, I should have no vacuum. In other words, if you put your finger over this vacuum line, there should be no vacuum. Now, when you rev the engine around three, 4,000 RPMs, you should feel vacuum. And that's, that's a very quick test. You can see and verify if this vacuum line is clogged or if it is not clogged, okay? So that's what you want to do. Now every vehicle is a little bit different. On this specific vehicle, before we rev the engine, we have to disconnect this guy right here. This is the EGRC solenoid. So we have to disconnect that before we rev the engine. See, sometimes you have to do a little bit of homework before you uh, tackle this, but this, this is the general theory you want to check. In other words, check the vacuum line, check the EGR valve. Now, if, if you're not exactly sure if you have to disconnect something like this on your vehicle, the short and quick answer is just replace the vacuum hose. Very inexpensive, remove it, bring it to your local auto parts store, they'll get the right diameter, they'll cut it to the right length, and just reinstall it. You know, just take the guesswork right out of it, in that sense. Uh, and we'll also check this EGR valve. So let me put everything back on, I'm going to start the car, and let's see how we turn out. So now the car is properly warm. I'm going to disconnect the hose, going to the EGR valve, okay? And right here is where the hose, just place your finger over it, and there should be no vacuum, okay? Now I have to put the camera down, but I'm going to rev the engine and do the exact same thing. Keep my finger over this hose and rev the engine, and let's see if we have vacuum. And we should have vacuum when we do this. But again, we have to disconnect this solenoid first. Okay. Okay, here we go. Okay, I have vacuum. Let me turn off the car. So this verifies that this line is in good shape. Now, two scenarios that we need to discuss. Scenario A is you perform this test, you are getting vacuum, very, very good chance this is what you need to replace, the EGR valve. And I'll show you how you can test this in a moment. Scenario B is you perform this test and there's no vacuum. So what you want to do is replace this rubber line. Okay, remove it, bring it to your local auto parts store. They'll match the diameter, cut it to length, reinstall it. Perform the same test. Start the engine, rev it. If you still do not have any vacuum, then you want to check the EGRC solenoid. It could also be the EGR temp sensor. Okay. Now, one thing also to note, do a little research on your vehicle. In other words, on the newer vehicles, this is a 97 vehicle, it's 20 years old. On the newer vehicles, some of these systems start to fade out. In other words, you can't test all these systems. But again, chances are if you are getting this trouble code, it's either the vacuum line or the valve itself. But let me just show you very quickly, in case you do have these components on your vehicle, how you can test this guy and the EGR temp sensor. Now testing the sensor is quite easy. What you want to do is apply 12 volts worth of power to this solenoid. So let me grab my screwdriver here. So as you can see, you have two prongs inside the solenoid and you want to apply 12 volts worth of power. You can use your car battery. Uh, the other thing is you can do this when you turn the ignition key on. In other words, just turn the ignition key on your vehicle and just click, unclick, click, unclick. And you should hear a solenoid move back and forth. Um, 
that's a little hard for you guys to hear because this makes a clicking noise when you put the harness connect watch. You hear that? So uh, it, it's going to be a little hard for you to pick up. So what I'm going to do is just grab, this is an RC battery pack, pushes out 12 volts worth of power. You can also use your car battery. And all that I'm going to do is apply power, essentially from here, right to that solenoid. So let me show you on how I'm going to do this. Very, very easy test you can do. Okay. Put this here. Doesn't matter which prong. You go to. Just don't cross the line. So that's the key thing here. You don't want to cross the line. Now we should hear a clicking noise. This valve is working correctly, okay? Okay, here we go. Not sure if you can pick that up. Let me come in a little bit closer. So I'm not sure if you can pick that up, but this is working correctly. That valve is working correctly inside that solenoid. So this is in good shape. Now if you perform this test, the last thing you want to check is the EGR temperature sensor. Now in this vehicle, this is what I was talking about earlier. On some older vehicles, you can test this. On the newer cars, uh, you usually have to do, it's, it's a little more tricky. But in this, since it's old enough, we can test this. And there's a wire, let me see if I can show you right over here. It's really hard to see, but there's an EGR temperature sensor that you can physically remove from the vehicle. So what I'm going to do is, I'm, I did this on a separate video. Uh, it's really tight back here, but I have a separate video on how I get access to that temperature sensor and remove it and test it. So I'm just going to splice in on how you can test that sensor. If you want to see the whole, the entire video, I'll include a link in the description box below showing on how I got to it, how I removed it. But again, chances are if you're getting P0400, the vacuum line, or the EGR valve itself. Let me show you on how you can test the EGR valve. Now this happens to be a vacuum tester. You can purchase one of these from Amazon, your local auto parts store. Essentially what this tool does is it applies vacuum to any component. You can also bleed brakes with this component. Very, very nice tool to have. So what I want to do is apply vacuum to the EGR valve and see if this needle holds. If the needle does not drop back down, then the diaphragm built in the EGR valve is in good shape. Okay, so I'm just going to take the end of this tester and plug it into the EGR valve. This is the first test, and then we'll do a, uh, a second test right after this. So we're just going to apply some vacuum and keep an eye on the needle. And you can really let it sit for 30 seconds or so, but essentially, as you can see, this needle is completely steady. That tells us that the diaphragm inside the EGR valve is in good shape. If you perform this test and the needle does not hold or it starts to drop down, something like this, just at a, low, at a slower level, then that's a good indication that the EGR, is, the EGR valve is bad. Now the second test we can perform is doing the exact same thing but when the vehicle is running. So we'll start the vehicle, let it idle, apply vacuum, and the vehicle should start to it may stall, but certainly will start to run rough. Okay, so let's try that test as well. Okay, here we go. Okay, already here the RPM is dropping a little bit. And there you go, it's starting to run a little rough. So this EGR valve is in good shape. Let me shut off the car. So now we verify that the EGR valve is in good shape, the lines running to the valve is in good shape. So we're okay, but let's say you have a newer vehicle and the end of your EGR valve has a harness connector. As, again, this is 20 years old. I don't have that kind of system on this vehicle, but the newer cars do have harness connectors on the EGR valve. And the question becomes, can you test the valve? Yes, you can. It's really off the connector coming from the valve itself. Let me jump over to another vehicle and show on how you can do an ohms test to see if that valve is okay. Now right here we have an EGR valve for a 2010 Subaru and we can test for continuity directly from the EGR valve. So right here we have a harness connector, you just press down where my thumb is, pull back, harness connector is removed. Now inside this connector there are six prongs for this specific vehicle. This is when you have to do a little research for your specific vehicle just to see what the readings need to be. But for this vehicle we should see 
around 22 ohms. Now we need a multimeter to do this. And on the multimeter, there's a setting for ohms. That's the omega symbol. This guy right here. And this has an auto function, so we don't have to change this to kilo or mega ohms. In other words, get an auto ranging multimeter. Just makes the job a lot easier and the guesswork out of it in a sense. Okay, so we'll place this. Let me put this down so you guys can see this at the same time because I want to zoom in a little bit here. Now the end of the multimeter has two probes and we want to use these probes to make contact with the prongs inside the EGR valve. And we should see roughly 22 ohms worth of resistance. Let me get a good connection here. And there you go, 22.1 ohms worth of resistance. So that verifies that this sensor is in good shape. Again, do a little research on your vehicle. Go to forms, uh, a web search. Very quickly, typically, you can pick up uh, the reading that you need to see for your specific vehicle. And just see what you come back with. Now, the last step is if you have to remove this valve, let me jump over to another um, setup that I have and it'll just give you a better view on how to remove the valve and install a new one. But this is generally what you find on many vehicles. It's very accessible, the EGR valve. And as you can see, we just have a vacuum line. There we go. And then they tend just to have two bolts. In this case, it's 12 millimeter. There's one right there and another one right there, and then it just pops right off. So you just loosen up those two bolts. One really nice wrench, by the way, because sometimes the EGR valves, the diaphragm, uh, the circumference is so large that you can't just stick a, uh, a socket with an extension it just it's in the way so we can grab one of these angled wrenches there's these are terrific and you can easily fit around different obstacles and get clear access to the bolts really really nice wrench to have I use that thing all the time so you remove these two bolts and that's it so when you have whoop, that's a washer when you obtain your new EGR valve Make sure you just clean off the surface. Make sure it's nice and clean. A lot of times they come with a gasket. Reinstall the new gasket. Put everything back together. Don't forget your vacuum line. And that's it. That's all it takes. Again, chances are if you're getting this trouble code, it's the vacuum line itself or the valve. So thank you for watching. Hopefully this gives you a pretty good idea on what you need to do to tackle this job. If you like this stuff, please thumbs up, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.